Welcome back, everyone. You're in the current with Rutten River Pursuits podcast and the guys from Pocono Outdoors guy. I'm Steve. Hey, I'm Ryan. I'm Josh. I'm George. I'm Catfish. Stevie. Yeah. What did we do today? D- this was an awesome day. I'm exhausted. I'm starving. Yeah. I'm hot. <laughs> I think I'm a little dehydrated. But, man, I had a great day catching shad. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, that's what we were doing. We were at, uh, what's the name of this place? Delaware Canal State Park. Yep. Where the place the is Le- known as uh, Easton Falls. Easton Falls, where the Lehigh River uh, dumps into the, I guess, the Delaware River. The Delaware, right. right. Yeah. Beautiful area. Nice water. Nice day. Couldn't have asked for a better trip. And now we know why George Washington decided to cross the Delaware. I would have, too. <laughs> the right shad here. were running. They were. And I his thought stripers he did it. were on the other side. <laughs> he was around Christmas time, though, wasn't he? Maybe it was an early run that too technical. year. Anyways. Yeah, Buck's not here. <laughs> he knows all these things. <laughs> yeah, so, Josh, George, thank you. We had, a, we had a great day. Oh, it was really our pleasure. Yeah, I would, really. It was a long drive for you guys. I really appreciate you guys coming out yeah. and uh, fishing with us. Uh, I'm sure this won't be the last time. I hope not. I hope. So, how long have you guys been shad fishing? Uh, me all my life. I mean, I grew up um, on the Delaware. I lived in Philly initially, so uh, you know when the shad started coming up, we'd hop in the boats, run up to like Lambertville, uh, and just that was the thing you did in the springtime. And um, you know, Josh and I started fishing not too long ago. I've been out of it for a couple of years. He says mm-hmm. we got to go hit the shad run, and uh, we we started doing it about a year or so ago. And you can see why it's addictive. Oh man, you're not kidding. So so we were using light tackle, you know, like. I actually brought my, my trout rods and uh, wait we're not just using light we're using Josh and George's light tackle Josh and George's <laughs> light tackle yeah we were uh, those hardcore yeah shad I, I've got to give a shout out to uh, John Augustine and the, the hot, hardcore uh, shad fishing crew uh, they gave us some great uh, lures to, oh, to go they with killed today. it they, I donated they did, most they of they mine it. the river. really got us on the fish today <laughs> yeah I think I caught I don't know how many I caught. I, you were quite, on fire, Steve. Quite a few, but it was Every time I turned around, spins. your rod was bent in yeah. half. It was, uh, this was a great day. It, it was, was. A great day. So we're you're throwing into the current and letting it drift and waiting for one of those bam. shad to get irritated and bam. Bam. Yeah. yeah, the first one I laid into, I mean, Josh, George, you guys both told me, it, you know, it's going to hit and you'll know. Well, you'll know. There's, there's no mistake. And it was, it was like a sledgehammer. They hit like torpedoes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he, the thing is, like, I didn't. You, we've been talking about doing this for weeks, and we talked when you had you guys on the show earlier, um, earlier in the year. We talked a little bit about shad fishing, and I, I didn't, uh, I didn't. I don't know if I didn't believe you or, or just didn't. Sure. Just didn't understand fully understand. Yeah, it's what come it was experience like. it. Yeah, I, yeah, I think we had Stevie it. when we said poor man's tarp. And yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are acrobatic little suckers, aren't they? they? Oh, yeah. Are. Right, so we we. We brought back, what, nine, and I think we were back nine, and we were probably a 25, 30-pound stringer. Oh, yeah. It was so, fun to carry up from the river. Yeah, <laughs> it looked fun. Mm-hmm. It looked fun. So we, we made out pretty good. Oh, we got some amazing bait. And we threw it, back yeah. at least three or four times, oh, yeah. you know, what we well brought. Kept. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed rooting through uh, Josh and George's tackle boxes yeah. today. <laughs> got, you know, shad darts and little shad spoons and the oh, stack rigs. Rigs. What yeah. else is in here? Oh, look at this. I, I felt bad because at the beginning of at 6, six o'clock this morning, George's uh, plano box was overflowing. Heaping, with, <laughs> heaping full. Heaping full with tackle. And it's pretty much empty now. You've got to go shopping now. Yeah, it's all good. That's all we bring it. We bring it to use it. So Well, we used it, buddy. We uh, sure yeah, did. We, the river, the flow is a little bit up right now. Is so, it? you know, every little rock becomes an obstacle, and we left a couple of spoons in the river. It happens. Just it does few. happen. You sacrifice to the shad gods, you know? Yep. yep. <laughs> there were, other than fishing, there was a couple other interesting events that happened mm. today, wasn't there? Anybody care to? talk about are we going to do this right now is this right when you you want to <laughs> right go into now. that right away <laughs> we, i was good i popped We're, out this morning and surprised you that was fun yeah, yeah that, that's true I, we should talk about that so it was supposed to be you know, josh and george from Pokemon outdoors guy and myself will and ryan yep and I, we've been trying to get people to uh miss work all day long or all week long yeah we're trying and, to uh, spread the flu around spread so the flu around be sick today. And unfortunately uh catfish he, he was sick <laughs> i was come two o'clock i felt horrible 
once we got here and started fishing, man. I felt a lot better real you quick. You perked up. <laughs> yeah. I was worried about you early this morning, but it this, must have been the This morning sunlight. was my favorite time. Under the bridge, before the sun really came up, this, uh, you know, all, all rivers have like a, a sense of, you know, mystic to them, uh, majestic, whatever the word is, but under that bridge this morning was just really peaceful. It was really calm and... Uh, you could see there was there was two metal bridges with the trains and we were kind of standing between them and as the sun came up the sun was coming up between the bridges and we got a few shad there and uh a couple i got my first couple big bites there but uh i see now why guys move up this way there seems to be a lot of snags under them bridges uh yeah. just you know debris must have been caught up for years underneath the bridge but uh boy it was just a really it was a surreal type of morning down here on this river, especially when you've never been here before when you get to see a new place and i didn't think it could get any better than that and then you guys take us you know up river just a little bit ways just a short walk and there's these giant what's this fall called uh, easton falls. falls that's where the lehigh river is spilling into the uh, delaware here it's absolutely uh, it's hypnotizing to listen to it all day it was very calming you know moving water can be uh you know, very therapeutic, and to stand Absolutely. there right beside it, listening yeah. to yeah. it all day, it's a crashing white water, you mm-hmm. know, over the spillway. I well, can't say that I, I have any other place that I'd rather be. It's really gorgeous. Yeah, I'm just really glad. I mean, this morning it was a little still slow getting started, and I wanted to be sure we all got you guys on fish, and uh, fortunately we, we killed it today, I think. Yeah. And uh, But after the slow start, I mean, everybody started getting into the fish. I was going to say, I do believe everybody got multiple, right? Oh, yep. man, yeah, yeah. at good. least. I was off to a slow start. I was sitting next to uh, Punk. Punk was his name? What was his name? Puck. 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 Yeah, so I was, uh, when we moved up next to the falls, I was sitting next to this guy. I'm going to guess he was 70. Yeah. That's yeah. my guess. Sitting right next to him. He was, man, he was throwing out Chad, throwing out Chad, throwing out Chad. I went, hmm. Well, then I watched his retrieve, and I watched where he was throwing. I even tied up the same as him. You were taking notes. For like an hour, he was pulling Chad, and I'm going, started to doubt myself as a fisherman, so I started talking to him. Turned out to be a really cool guy. And uh, it literally was, I think it was retrieve speed. That's all it really was for me. But once I got on him, man, it was it was, it was bite after bite once I figured it out. That yeah, guy was super cool. Retrieve speed did seem like the number one thing today. We yep. caught him on darts. We caught him on spoons. They just wanted a, the right speed. Yep, they wanted that presentation like almost perfect. I and think we were lucky, too, towards the end of the day there. We had that whole school of a move right in front of us. Too. Big surge. Yeah. yeah. And it's got, it's got to be, what, 80-plus degrees out? Oh, right it's now. so yeah. hot. Yeah. But that water's still really chilly. So it, I mean, there, it's amazing place. to be able to catch fish at midday, 80, 85 degrees. The fishing seemed to be hot during, you know, 10, 10, 10, 30, 11. But I guess it's just that cool water and all that water coming over that spillway that really turns them on. Right. So speaking of cool water, how cool was the water? So now right. we're going to do it. Okay. I, I, That's what it is. Listen, I, what you, happened, bud? I took a bit of a spill, right? Uh. <laughs> Josh laid into what, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing what might have been the biggest fish of the day. I think it was probably one of them, yeah. And uh, this thing ran down the river, turned around, ran back up the river. Josh couldn't gain any line on him. He was spooling him, zizzing him, as zizzing they him. say. Oh, yeah. As they say. And, uh, you got zizzed yourself. <laughs> I said, you know what? It's time. I got to go be the net man, which I failed at miserably earlier in the day. But Twice. this time, I was successful. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. But I was only successful after I took a short swim. <laughs> well, you were standing on a rock that wasn't ankle deep. No. You took one step I, forward and went waist deep. Right. Yeah, it was one of those rocks that are angled, pretty sharp. But everything else, you know, is six, eight inches of water before you get that little gravel bar. So I'm, I put my foot on this rock that I knew was going to slide back, but I'm expecting that gravel bar to be there. It just, just, it kept just going. wasn't. <laughs> It was great to watch, I have to yeah. tell you. You should have brought your belay. My belay, yeah. Belay that. <laughs> Someone belay me. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'll bet you that hole was probably 10 foot deep. Oh, Ooh. I looked over and I... I never did touch bottom. It was like oh. slow motion. You ever watch somebody like slip on a banana peel backwards yeah. and throw one hand up in the air and then that... Because Ryan was in slow motion going down and there was no stomping him. Nope. Nope, and then I saw the... The waders go under whenever your waders went up past the R2 on your chest. Yeah. And I was sitting there going, mm-hmm. 
Wonder what's not waterproof above the chest line. Yeah. Well, I, du- I double checked everything in my pockets. I'm actually okay. Still wearing the same clothes now. Didn't have to change out. So good. didn't I've... get too bad. And it was actually refreshing. Yeah, yeah. Even though that water's in the upper 40s, lower 50s, it's. You, you want to know what's hot. not waterproof? What's that? My waiters. Your waiters? <laughs> Will, Will ran into some trouble today. Oh, I within guess, five huh? minutes this morning, me and Will took a walk down around that bridge that I told you about this morning. Yeah. We headed down that way. And, uh, the current was stronger than we had expected, you know, for what it looked like. And uh, Will's first cast kind of got caught up about eight feet from the bank. Yeah. And uh, he had to walk out to get it. And it was all, he was all but like a millimeter from the top of his waders anyhow. Yeah. And I told him, I said, bud, stop, man. Just stop, right? Break it off. You're going to get, we just started and you're going to be soaked. You're about to fill your waders up. And that current, nope. Nope, don't matter. He looked over and goes, oh. nope, there's a hole in my waders anyhow. I'm already <laughs> five minutes into it. It was good. Now there's an even bigger hole in the waders, right? Yeah. Now. He pulled the drain plugs on them. Yeah, they're, not, <laughs> they're not existent. Yeah. We let them go. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what happened, but at some point I looked over at Will, and from about the belt line down around the like the anterior hip clean back up to the top of possibly the butt talks yeah crack area there's a giant rip in them oh so I, did i don't know buddy did you do a split or what uh i just think it just progressively got worse jumping around the rocks down here yeah but one pair of waders down it was a casualty of shad fishing but yeah it happens everybody says i'm big for my britches yeah there's a guy's got a job making new new waders well, every day i i would like to thank josh for hooking into that fish that made me go for the net and made me fall in because that seemed to really turn my day around oh yeah also that was the other thing once i got once i got uh a little bit wet got a little taste of the river it turned the day around, and I'll tell you that was the coolest part for me. I know that these these shad are running, and they're you know they're schooled up, and they're in the, out there in the white water, and we're catching them all over the place. But the coolest part was when we were watching them chase. Oh yeah! And they're hitting it no more than eight feet off the bank. Oh, four I mean, feet right, in right in front of you, right yeah. in front of us. So it was cool. amazing. Those things are like little torpedoes. Mm-hmm. I, you'll see them like chasing behind it too, kind of like a muskie. I mean, you, you know, you see a fish swipe at it, and you, he have you know, he's on there, whatever. But these, you actually see him coming in from a ways too, charging it. Yeah, it's really cool. It was wild. I mean, I had Will's other waders on. They're made for like February goose hunting, and I had a. You, I, I think at one point, didn't I? I even sat down in the water, and uh, just was cooling my wrists off with that cold water, enjoying the water. Uh, and yeah, they come swimming by my legs. They look like just silver flashes flying by. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Josh, why don't you take a few seconds and just kind of run people through the technique we used to, to actually catch these, the, the specific tackle, mm-hmm. and, and and how we did it. Wait till somebody catches one and take their spot. Right. Yeah. Short drift of range. That's yeah. What, <laughs> that's what Stevie did. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Um, Typically, I mean, you know, there's fluctuations that can be made depending on flow and, and everything else. Uh, an all-around setup, six-pound mono, you know, a couple of split shots to get you off the bottom, but you, you want to touch it every once in a while, so enough split shots for, for the current flow. Um, and then if you're using a spoon, you want to put a little bit of a bend in that spoon, you'll get a lot more action out of it. A dart, you know, you want to constantly switch up your colors, give it little mm-hmm. twitches and stuff. Um, and you want to bend it with on the pointy side in, almost exactly. like you're making the, the hook a little bit e- more inward. Exactly, kind of making that hook almost shaped like a circle hook as it comes back around again. Yep. It's, it's almost like uh, drifting a, a trout magnet. Yes. It's kind of what I, you know, what... what really struck me as, as I was really a, a lot like trout fishing. You know, we were just drifting bait or, or, or drifting, yep. you know, a, a, a small dart for well, We trout. had uh, two different presentations, well, two different techniques, really. Um, where we started, we would cast and let it drift and just twitch it as yeah. it made its way naturally downstream. As yeah. The second spot, we were kind of making more active cast and retrieves. Yeah. Yeah, that was... A, Which did you prefer? I, I preferred the second the second Cast one. and retrieve. Yeah, it just kind of... Uh, yep. Uh, you knew when they hit. Me. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you knew when they hit when you were drifting it, but it also felt like the split shot might have been bumping rocks. And But when you were retrieving it, it's almost like they tried to grab it and go the other direction. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it, that that was amazing how they grab it and then run into the current like and, and just sit. As there were times where, I mean, it, it they just sat and, you know, it felt like you had... 
You said a turtle. You were on it. Yeah, I, I was <laughs> joking with Ryan. Like I had, a, I got a snapping turtle on yeah. here because it was just, you Wait. know, it wasn't moving. Yeah, and then you wear it down a little bit, but. I'm really used to gizzard shad. I'm not used to these American shad to get this big. They're and you huge. tell me, you tell me that they get even bigger yet. How big do the, these shad actually get? I would say the biggest one we caught today was uh, maybe four pounds. Yeah. And um, within recent memory, there's been eight pounders. And then you go back wow. through the books and you'll see 10, 11 pounders. Really? I think I lost the 10 pounders. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> That's I'm one of the, the snapping turtles. Two of them, wasn't there. it, Steve? It was at least two. Two yeah, of them. One yeah, the, uh, the drag took off and he snapped and broke my heart. And, uh, and that other, happened. To the other one was twice. almost touching the net. Yeah, the other one was almost it's touching the net. I think there was two or three line. that were Scoop. almost touching there the it went. net. Stevie had me calling McKenzie to see if they had a shad mold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I can't, besides the great fishing, uh, you know, getting down here nice and early. You, Watching Stevie's face hook up multiple times, watching Ryan mess up with the net and fall in once or twice, yep, yep. watching you ruin some fish, watching, you know, Will get in the water and, you know, rip his waders, get wet, still laughing all day long, having a blast, catching a bunch of fish. To see you guys out wading chest deep like a bunch of fly fishermen, alongside a fly fisherman, yeah. but, yeah. Um, smashing these giant shad made this day, you know, this is what kicks my summer off. You know, I'm really busy working on this boat. I haven't been fishing, and I really needed this. This day's exactly what I needed. I feel like I'm reset, and I'm ready to go. Um, and having said that, I really want to thank George. Thank you so much for allowing us to fish all day. Oh, it's our pleasure, you man. You know, you, George sat out most of the day to film us. And, uh, you know, I, I, that's some place we're trying to get Stevie to, where he can sit back and <laughs> film a little bit and not fish. But yeah, it's, we're a ways off. It's that ain't not happening happen. yet. But, we're a ways uh, off. Yeah, that was super classic of you as a host to bring us down and do that for us. It would, it, it definitely probably would have been tough for me too to sit there and watch oh, it was all of us smashing fish and laughing. And yeah, it was a good day. So what what are you going to work on? So you filmed basically all day, right? Yeah, yeah. well, there'll be an episode of Poker Outdoors Guy probably in about two weeks. We'll have that up, and uh, nice. we'll put a link to the podcast as well. So, okay. Uh, two okay. weeks. I'm going to be bugging them tomorrow for Snapshot. <laughs> George. No, not tomorrow. i got to wait a couple of days. Remember that everybody has a flu. we got to wait a few days. Yeah, I need to it. redo my wrap-up interview, though, George, because we did that while I still only had caught one fish. So I think we should redo it now that I... Got a couple more under my belt. Yeah, well, we can do it right now. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm going to speak for all of us when I say I'm hungry. Me too. <laughs> We've really worked hard all day up and down the bank. I come up to the truck quite a few times to get a drink. Uh, and it got a lot warmer out than I thought that it was going to be today. I started off with uh, no sleeves. Thought maybe that was a mistake, but no. It turned out to be the right idea. Yeah, you, you have right. a hard time uh, going into work and saying you were sick yesterday. Just uh, looking at you there. I'm going to go home and repaint the boat tonight and get over spray all over me. <laughs> so, yeah, be like, I don't know what happened. The wind blew black paint all over my face. But, yeah, it's going to be difficult because the sunglasses lines are definitely showing. I can feel it. I thought maybe you were going to be painting the boat clammy pale. Yes. Look how sick I am. Yeah. <laughs> New color. New color. Coming out. So typically, real quick, we I don't know if we mentioned this. So when does this shad run sort of start and sort of end? Because we talk, we don't think we've said that it's how like we said it was seasonal, but not what is it? Yeah. So it's uh, it's a spring run. Uh, the it's not really a day or even a water temperature um, that corresponds. It's usually mid April. It's definitely been more late April this year. Um, a lot to do with how much snow you get, how much melt off there is, and really a magic number you're looking for in shad fishing is 50. Yeah. If you hit 50, there's almost guaranteed shad in the river. Now there could be shad in the river at 38 degrees. They just don't do a whole lot of moving. Right. Right. You know, you, and you get hardcore shad guys out here that do it. You know, from the second there's any shad in the river, period. You know, wow. they don't wait for there to be thousands like we had today. And uh, you know, they can be caught in 30 degree water. They can be caught in 60 degree water. April to June, typically. And there was a couple boats parked out in front of us today, anchored up. Yep. Uh, and I was trying to watch some of their techniques are the same but different. Um, they almost look like they have catfish and rod racks and uh, look like they're just using the current to, to work the baits. And some of them guys were tearing stuff up. Every time I looked over there, 
they were bringing in some big shad too. Yeah, the guys on the boats, they, they really know how to do it. I mean, they got the right setup. They can get right in that channel. And uh, what they're doing is they got uh, lines on downriggers so they can get them right at the depth, put the darts or the spoons right at the right depth. Uh, they also use what's called a poor man's downrigger. They'll get a um, like an old crankbait deep diver and they'll put a, a leader off the back of that and put a flutter spoon or a shad dart and let this deep diving crankbait out and that gets their depth as well. Brilliant. So it's a, it's a couple different techniques, but uh, the, the advantage with the boat is you can park yourself right in that channel where the yeah. fish are running up. Yeah. Yeah, so an advantage the boat guys have if they're using their downriggers is they can set it at whatever depth, run their spoon or whatever they're using off the back. And when we're thinking about it, every time we make a cast, we retrieve it, we bring it in, that's dead time. It's, you know, it's time where our bait's out of the water, we're not going to catch anything. With the downrigger set up, it's there presenting itself 100% of the time. So sure. you're just waiting for Shad to move through, you kind of take yourself out of the equation. Yeah. I mean, most, I, most of the time, all my bait was in the water the whole time. Because I was busy tying on another one. Mm, yes. You know what was really impressive to me, too, out here is the fact that the, all these big rocks, a lot of shallow water, blah, 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 and I'm looking out there, and the first boat we see today is a really nice, like, Jet River boat, which we're used to on a Susquehanna. And then I'm thinking, man, this guy's kind of, I mean, looking up this river, it looks super shallow, but guys are bringing deep fees down here with uh, prop engines on them. So that's highly impressive to me that the river can have that kind of diversity to it, just almost... I mean, I, I dare to say if I had a big lure on, I could probably cast almost as far as those guys were parked from yep, us, and we yep. were standing in yep. knee deep water. Yeah, it must be a pretty decent drop off out there in that yeah. channel. I and would bet that main flow is 30 to 35 feet. Really? Yep. Wow. And that's something I wanted to ask. Josh, you were talking to us about this earlier. You said it seems like when the shad start their run, they push out a lot of other fish. And I could just tell you, just from the areas we were fishing today and the fact that you can get your boat out on the water or all this amazing fishing right even from the from the banks or if you're going to wade in there, what what are the other opportunities for right here at the Delaware Canal here, State Park? You get, uh, you get some trout, uh, browns and rainbows. I think rainbows. Uh, definitely browns. Uh, you, walleye, uh, musky, and striper. Although when the shad are here, you typically don't see any of those others. Yeah, Puck was telling me he caught a nice walleye where we were sitting the other day. Oh, really? Yeah, Very yeah. Cool. And he was using uh, he was just using the stuff we were using. I gotta uh, jump in and say that one of the local guys here, Eddie Edgar Torres, he was telling us about some of the things he never has fished here for the shad run, but he caught a monster catfish just just right up the stream here in the Lehigh. Yeah, the guy. The guys came down here. To, I guess there was a shad bank tournament going on, where guys were driving around and, and fishing different locations today. And uh, and you know, typically for tournament fishermen, they were super cool with us. You know, the, like weren't in their like secret spots or things like yeah. that. You know, well, that's kind of something I, I wanted to touch on. Um, what did you think of the atmosphere? Because obviously we were we were fishing next to other people yeah. who we hadn't met before. You know, we haven't yeah. dealt with them before. And yet, I find this almost 99% of the time, everyone is open and willing to help. What did you think? Super laid back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There, there was a guy fly fishing near us, and uh, I <laughs> talked to him for 10 minutes or something like that when he was wrapping yeah, up. He was he getting was, out. You were chasing him out. I, yeah. I you guys pushed had a little him conversation. Out and the guy that was a full head of hair. Yeah. That was yeah. about hair. 10 he minutes after I actually hooked into him. <laughs> I, I think I had one of those spoons laid into one of his I, uh, yeah, tackle bags. I'm pretty oh. sure his waders. Yeah. Are leaking by the end of the day because there was a couple times I got pretty close <laughs> drifting. I know, saw him pushing some of your shad away from him as you're reeling them in, too. <laughs> like, you ever see them visors with the fake hair sticking out? Yeah, I got that's one. What, well, I thought that's what he had on at first. But no, it, it was, was legit. I'm not picking on him. He just has a lot of hair. Some people well, like to rub that in. And, and Will, you brought up Edgar, and he was the guy that we were talking to just as we were heading out, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we. Uh, we hooked him up with one of these flutter spoons. And who did we just see walk by here no more than 10 minutes ago? <laughs> yeah, he got into him, so. Yeah, awesome. he had a he stringer full. Much, I'm sure, but. That's a decent size shad he brought up here, too. Yeah, buddy. Holy mackerel. George, if you'd have to tell me bass fishing or shad fishing? Oh, without a doubt, shad fishing. Really? Yeah, it's, um, you know, you know, bass, I, I grew up my whole life doing bass, and uh, one of the things that we really like to do is be a little more diverse in what we fish for. 
Um, I mean, I used to go out there on weekends like everybody else in the bass boat, pounding the shoreline with a Texas rig and a spinner bait and, you know, bumping brush with uh, the crank baits. But uh, you, you look beyond just the everyday stuff, and there's just so much more things to do if you open your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Here we got shad, you got stripers, you got big catfish. Uh, enjoy it. I mean, it's the outdoors. There's so much to do. Don't limit yourself to just one species. Get out there and enjoy it. Yeah. Same question, Josh. Monster muskies through the ice or shad fishing? Oh goodness, that's not even fair. <laughs> uh, um, you had like four. You got like four seconds. Uh, musky fishing, <laughs> but reluctantly. Shad yeah. fishing is a world of fun. It's just different. That's night and day, though. Yeah, it, it's totally different. I mean, m- musky fishing is you know you just persistence until you get something huge. Where shad fishing is multiple line screamers, jumpers. Uh, probably nothing beats the adrenaline rush of a of a big musky through the ice, but. Uh, sh- constantly pounding shad all day on the river is unbelievably fun. You know, I'm glad that we don't live closer. I'd be addicted to I this know. too. <laughs> I know it. It'd be it'd be Friday shad fishing, Friday night cat fishing, Saturday bass fishing, repeat Sunday. Yeah. Monday I'd be shad fishing, cat fishing, Monday night. Wait a minute. There's a lot of days calling off work. At <laughs> some point you gotta go in. Nah. Wednesday. What? <laughs> Maybe September. Thursday morning. All right, guys, I'm, I'm starting to get hungry. I don't know about you guys. Starving. Absolutely. Yeah. Strumble uh, time. Let's go get some lunch. Thanks again. We had a great day. Yeah, thank oh, again, you, George. Thank really you guys for coming out. I know it was a long did. drive, and I really hope it was worth it, and I hope you guys appreciated this. Absolutely. And, uh, had, a, had a good time. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah, anytime. So, so how can people uh, find Pocono Outdoors Guy? Well, you can check us out on YouTube, um, the Pocono Outdoors Guy. Uh, check us out on Facebook. It's at POG Network. And we're also on Instagram as Pocono Outdoors Guy. So check us out and... Uh, Enjoy some of the videos. Super cool guys, All right. check them out, man. They, I mean, what did we meet you guys last year? It's been almost a year, I guess, and uh, have absolutely nothing to say but class act guys. Well, I think we're almost family now. I mean, we did the yeah. podcast back in January. Mm-hmm. We all hung out at the Great American Outdoor Show. Yeah, uh, was fishing today, so it, it's it's family by this point. Absolutely. Yeah. Now it's time to get you guys up to Lake Mead on some largemouth and some, like you said, you want to come up and do the flathead thing too. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, we'll get that done this year, too. Now that I know where to get bait. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. We're going to buy you a deep freezer. <sighs> yeah. Josh, and then you can keep us hundreds of shad and bring them up. Please. Please do. I'll bring you as many as you need. Maybe we'll even deck it out. We'll call the boys from Antler Ice and get you a, a shad ice cooler. Shad Ooh. ice. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Seriously, George. Thanks, man. Thank Josh. you, sir. Pleasure. Great day. Hey, Ryan. Yes, Steve. You know what's coming. Oh, yeah, well, I do. Where can they find us? Check us out at ruttandriverpursuits.com and follow us on all your social media properties. Just search for Rut and River Pursuits and check out the YouTube channel also at Rut and River Pursuits Podcast. Download the podcast itself on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Castbox. Castbox. I did that with no notes. That was good. What do you think? Good Impressive. Job. Thanks. Impressive. You have my shadow first on brain. <laughs> Made you nice and relaxed. Yeah. yeah. I was actually picturing myself reading the menu at uh, wherever we're going to eat. <laughs> yeah, let's get after let's that. Let's do that. Pocono Outdoors guy. Thanks, fellas. Thanks, guys. Thank you. you. Bring them weedless.